Welcome to another video on Dynamic 365 related topics. Today I want to talk about the deprecation of export to data lake and the impact on Power BI reports. As you might know, export to data lake is deprecated. This means in the future you won't be able to use it anymore and you won't get any data out from data lake. Now there is a transition guide how you can switch to a different technology. Preferred is Synapse of course, but uh, the most transition guides and instruction I found assume that you have a kind of data warehouse in between. And I would like to show you a simple way how you can switch from data lake to Synapse without having a data warehouse in between by just replacing the data source in your Power BI report. So let's get started. I have a very simple Power BI report here. This report is based on a data lake and we are using the cast table and the customer groups and I have two very simple visuals here. One is a list and the other one is a diagram that shows the customer by customer group. Let's have a look in the data and how this is generated. So I have two queries in my Power BI. Both use data lake, one use the cast table, one the cast group. So I'm loading the cast group and I'm merging it with the cast table to have the customer and its customer group by name. It looks like this if we check the dependencies here. So I have a data lake, a storage account in fact, I'm loading the customer group and I'm merging it with the cast table. And what I want to do is to get rid of this data lake here and replace it by a Synapse link. So in fact we want to query a SQL endpoint and keep all the logic that is in our Power BI reports and Power BI queries. Now how can this be done? Um, there are different ways, like I said. Uh, the simplest way that I want to show you today is that we replace uh, simply the query. And to do this, I go to the first table that I'm using here, that's uh, the cast group table. And you see I'm loading all the data here from the data lake. And what I would recommend in the first step uh, before any logic is done uh, to kick out everything that you don't need. So you see here are a lot of rows that are not used and what I'm really using here is uh, the customer group, the data area ID, the name and I have created here an additional column, a primary column that combines the data area ID with the cast group and is used for the merge operation later on. So, we have the source here. This is my demo environment from my Dynamics 365 instance. And it is loading and generating the stuff here. So, the first thing that I would like to do is to kick everything out that we don't need. So, starting from the first row, we can kick everything out until we reach the cast group. And you see the step is removed after the navigation. This is important. We don't need the default dimension. And we don't need these in between. So we only need the customer group, the name, the data area ID, and everything else can be removed. Now in the next step, we want to create a SQL statement based on our Synapse instance that generates a data set that looks exactly like this data set which is used for the Power BI logic afterwards. So we need a select statement that returns the cast group, the name and the data area ID. And one thing is important here, uh, make sure that the fields that you get from the select statement are case sensitive, like here. So we need an uppercase C, an uppercase G, an uppercase N, and the same goes for data area ID. So I'm switching to my Synapse instance and I'm generating a SQL statement that looks like this. 
So in the browser, this is my demo workspace for Synapse and as you see I'm already connected to a test environment from Dynamics 365 and what I can do here is I can write a select statement on the cast group and we want these fields here so this would like be like select cast group name and data area ID from cast group this is a table and let's run this the first time when you run such a query may take a few, mu a few minutes but if you run it a second time it's returned in a few seconds so we see this matches and uh, what I would recommend uh, to do is now to create an additional data source in Power BI this makes life easier for us so new data source and we are going for Synapse and we have to provide the server name, the database name and I'm also providing the SQL statement in here so the server name for my demo environment is this here the database can be found directly here in Synapse, that's the name of the database and I try to copy this value and paste it here import mode and by clicking on advanced option I can provide the SQL statement and the SQL statement is very simple is this here and now we click OK and this should return the data from Synapse so it looks like the data that we have from Data Lake and now what I can do is to click on Advanced Editor and I'm going to copy this line and paste it to the query for my cast group so on the cast group right click Advanced and you see these are the loading and removing and adding culling steps and what we want to do, we want to skip uh, the load and the remove but keep the add column here so I can simply comment this here out and paste my statement we need a comma here and uh, add column is now based not on the removed column step but on the source and this should be everything so as you can see this looks great we have no error here so this query is now based on uh, a SQL connection and I will do the same with the cast table so you see the cast table is also uh, very long, there's a lot of data that we don't need and I'm going here in my steps after the navigation before my logic starts I'm going to remove some columns and let's check what we don't need we don't need these columns here I need the record D because I use it in one visual for distinct count so I don't uh, should delete it if you delete something that is used your visuals will break but uh, if you know which column you need you can always go here and for example uh, remove this step here so if you need the uh, LSN whatever uh, you remove it from this uh, statement and you have it back so we do we need the record D as said I need of course a count num and you see all this removing is added in one statement I need the cast group because this is used for a join later on I should not delete the cast group so let's go and find the cast group 
I also need the currency, I will keep the currency as well. Here is the cast group. And I need the data area that can be found somewhere back here. Here it is. And I don't need these columns. So these are columns that I used in my report. Uh, in general, it should be so that you remove things you don't use in your reports, but I have seen many reports and typically people tend to load just everything. So this might be a good idea to remove something. Okay, so we have the account number, the currency, the cast group and the data area ID. This is fine. And when we check the next steps, we have the foreign key here. Uh, we have the merge with the cast group and we have the expand. This looks good. So let's save this report. And then we are going to replace the data lake connection in the cast table as well in the same way we did with the cast group oh, this takes a moment hopefully we don't get any error here looks good so I hope I did not destroy something from... Of course, I said I need a record ID, but I have deleted it. So if you have uh, such an issue, you go back to your query, to the remove columns, and somewhere back here in the cast table, in the removal. I said I need a rec ID, but I have deleted it somewhere. Here it is. So if you have the same error and did the same mistake like I did, just remove the delete operation here and send the record is back. Let's check if the visual is working again. And you see you can do this incremental. You don't need to replace every data connection at once. Because now I have one query that is based on Synapse and one that is based on uh, Data Lake. And you see the visual is working again. So let's finish the job. So back here in our cast table, now I have to create a SQL query that uh, generates account number, currency, cast group, data area, and of course the record D from the cast table. I can do this again here in my Synapse instance. So select rec ID, account num, currency, cast group, and the data area ID from cast table. Let's give it a try. Yeah, looks good. Record ID, account num, currency, cast group, data area ID. Looks fine for me. So again, I'm copying the SQL statement. Go to my temporary testing query. Go to advanced editor just to make sure that everything works like it should. Paste the SQL statement here. And this should return the cast table from the SQL endpoint as we need it. And again, let's go through the advanced editor, copy the source line, go to the advanced editor of the cast table, 
go to the advanced editor, find the step where we have to insert our logic. So we have the expand, we have the merge, we have the add, which adds uh, the foreign key. So we have to be somewhere in here. And again, I'm removing this code, placing my new query in here. Adding the comma at the end and on the next step the add custom step which creates an additional column is now based on source. Let's finish this. Check if everything works as it should. Remove the temporary query because we don't need it. Close and apply. Check if we don't have destroyed anything in our report. Now you see it is loading from the uh, SQL. If you have seen differences in the data, this may be because I have an uh, old data lake and I have uh, different synapse here but it's also based on the same Dynamics 365 finance instance. So the report uh, looks good, nothing is broken and when we check the dependencies you will see that we now rely on a SQL database, on the SQL endpoint of our synapse link and we have successfully removed the dependency of the data lake and that's it. You have successfully transitioned the report from data lake to Synapse without building a data warehouse in between. If you like the video I would be happy if you leave a thumbs up or a comment in the section on YouTube and if you have any questions, feel free to contact me. Thanks for watching the video and good luck with Power BI in Dynamics.